Hi everyone. So I am going to do my best to do this curriculum justice and do a flip through and also a review because we've been using it for the last several months and um, I just love this program so much and it can be extremely intimidating to a person like myself who knows nothing about literary analysis, the Socratic method, the Socratic questions. I am completely ignorant to all of this, but I am learning, I have been learning, and the more I learn about this program, uh, the more I enjoy it. And it's not so intimidating anymore because I just take it according to my own pace. So, um, when I first purchased it, I, yes, I purchased all of these things, but the main thing you're going to need are these two things here. So this is the guide, and these are the DVDs, which I thoroughly enjoyed, and I think there are, let me see, two, four, six, eight DVDs, and I watched them all. Not in one day, but over the course of a couple days. And this is done by Adam and Missy Andrews. And Adam leads the, he teaches the class. And I think he does a very good job with explaining it to someone who knows nothing. <laughs> so, if you are familiar with all of this, then it could be boring to you, but... I say check it out anyway, and then you can kind of like go at your own pace. So those are the DVDs. This is the book. So I'm going to uh, do my best here to show. Let's see, I'm going to move the camera around. So here are the table of contents. And it's this. it tells you it's, so it's how to use this book. Tools for Literary Analysis, Section 2 is Style and Context, Section 3 is Setting, Section 4 are Characters, Section 5 Conflicts and Plot, and Section 6 Theme, Section 7 is the Practicum, and that is basically, you're going, <clears throat> you're going through the program. So I'm going to flip through all the sections, uh, not too quickly, but... I don't want to make this like an hour long video, but I really, there's not a lot of reviews on this, so I want to just take my time. So anyway, oh, sorry, there's more. <laughs> Let's see, so we have uh, section eight, a curriculum for literature, and then you have the appendix section where, where you have the whole list of Socratic questions, and I'll flip through that. And then you have some reading list options and other things. So, here we are. How to use this book. So basically, it gives you a breakdown on the desks. So you can take it day by day. And it has the time. So that's pretty cool. And then what it does is, it really... So if you don't want to watch the DVDs, you can read all of this. And it'll explain just about everything to you. So, the first part is just going over um, why literature. Then you have, let's see, principle one. It go, Oh, it has three principles. Okay, goes over. And each principle, so the first principle is just going over. Hope you guys can see. Uh, there we go. I think that's good. Common elements, children's stories, and the Socratic method. So, and it teaches you how to, so let's see. It, kind of, it goes over the story chart. And so those are the three principles. So now we're getting to the style and context. And again, he explains all of this very well through through 
through the DVD. So I'm gonna just. So this is part of, so he actually did a, let me just hold the camera. Sorry, you guys. So he went through Paul Revere's ride, the poem, and he, through, in the DVD, he went through the Socratic list. So here's the poem. And... Okay, and then here we go. So then he selected the uh, a list of the Socratic questions. So in I'm going to show you um, in a little bit the whole list because he did not pick. Um, he he selected certain questions for this poem. So and then you just go through and you answer and you answer them and then you fill out the story chart for it. Then he does the same thing. So this section just focuses on uh, the style and context, I believe was the first. first one. So I'm gonna flip through. Then section three, you talk about the setting, okay? And he goes through and then he selected from Ricky, Ricky Tiki Tavi. <laughs> And he focuses on, he uses this story, this short story, to focus on the setting. And then he asks questions like, what is the mood or atmosphere of the place where the story happens? Okay. All right. And then section four is the characters. And he uses the adventures from Tom Sawyer to review the characters. And then he'll ask questions, okay? Like two would be, is the protagonist kind, gentle, stern, okay? Then you section five is the conflict and plot. Okay, and again, all of this he kind of reads through all of this. this is one of my favorites, actually, conflict and plot, because he goes over and he says he they believe that there are let me see one, two, three, four, five types of conflicts. Right? You can either have man versus man, man versus nature, or animal, man versus God or fate, man versus himself, man versus society. And this is one of the first things that I taught my kids. And now through every book that we read or every story, I'll ask them, what kind of conflict is this? And they tell me, this is man versus nature or man versus God. Or man. So it's just... This really helps a lot because even if I don't have a ton of questions to ask them, I can always ask them this and from there we can just have a very good discussion. And he uses the tale of Peter Rabbit uh, to go over the plot and conflict. And then he'll add, then it's questions like, um, does the protagonist get what he is after? So now this goes into, uh, he goes into the story chart and he uses the example from the Iliad, Macbeth. Okay, so here is the Iliad, right? So you read the Iliad and then you ask yourself or you ask your student, what kind of conflict is this? There, there can be more than one, right? So for this one, it's Greeks versus Detroit. Uh, Greeks versus the Trojans so it would be man versus man it's also um, man versus God Achilles and fate right or and then Achilles and himself so man versus himself so and then you can from there you can ask uh, some more questions okay so here is just some examples of the story charts and then you get into the theme so section six is all about the theme <clears throat> And he uses Martin the Cobbler. Let's go over that. And with each story, we, we haven't really gotten um, to do many of the story charts. 
but we've done a, we've, we've done a couple you pick and choose what you want and then then you can ask you a question like so for martin martin oh martin the cobbler you can ask a question like does the story merely call the reader's attention to the theme without trying to solve anything? So you see, I may not ask that question because my boys are younger, but I may ask them some, some other questions. All right, so here is the practicum section. And this he used uh, Casey and the Bat. And as you can see, this I did actually do this. So we went through, and then we did the story chart. I went and I filled in everything. I'm a geek that way, so I like to do. Um, I didn't take any 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 more notes, but let's see. Okay, so then you have section eight, a curriculum for literature. Hmm. What do you What do you need, Judah? An apple. Okay, just wait. Okay, baby. Okay, so here, let's see. All right, so then he has some reading lists, things that you can do, uh, so, uh, daily lesson plans that you can use. Let's see. Uh, so all about the story. So then you, then you have a copy of the story chart, and you can just make copies of those. So now this is where the meat is. So, so the Socratic list of questions. Now I'm not going to show you every question, but I'm going to just share a little bit with you guys. So you have questions about the settings. So you can see you have one, two, two different questions, but within each question you have sub-questions. And you may not pick every question to do. Oh, hold on. Okay, so I had to stop for a minute. So yeah, so basically, so within here, with these two questions about the setting, you have these sub questions that you can ask. Now, every question is not going to is not going to be able to be used. And they always say, in order for you to have a really good literary discussion, you just have to read the book. So I do try my best to read the book. Uh, especially if I want to have, you know, good questions. So, the characters, questions about the characters, you have one, two, but you see you have these subcategories. Okay. Questions about the conflict. Questions about the plot. Questions about the theme. Uh, then you have questions about literary devices, and he goes in, and there's also a definition, um... Like me, I didn't know what a lot of these things were. I'll show you that in a moment. Then you have questions about context. Oh, and then the literary devices. I guess we can just kind of, can you guys see? Let's see. Oh, it just, okay, there we go. I think you guys can see. So you guys have an idea. Okay, and then few more then questions about the context so who is the author where did the author live when did the author live and then you have a reading list so stories for young children juvenile fiction And uh, this might not be as exciting because there's just so many reading lists out there. But it's just nice that they included it. High school fiction. So as you can see, this is a, a pre-K all the way through high school curriculum. And this is all you need. Then you have a glossary of literary terms. So this is very helpful to myself. So, this is all you need. Seriously. Um, I hope this helps. If it doesn't and you really want to see something a little more closely, let me know. And I'll try to do more of a focused one. But this 
really is. So let me see. I think they are. Let's see how many questions are there. So you have an in-depth uh, amount of questions. You have 21 questions throughout the entire. Uh, let's. What do you. What do you call it? Like it, for, um, for the list of categories. And within each question, like I said before, you have these sub questions. Okay. So they always start with children's literature. So. I'm going to show you a couple more things. So I'm going to put this camera down now. Let's see. Okay, so that's this. So again, this is all you need to, to have a literary discussion with your children. Any grade level. Any grade level. Because you can start off with something that's just as simple as the setting. Actually, let me go to the setting real quick. Because we do, we do the setting a lot. So the setting would be, so where does the story happen? In what country or region does the story happen? Does it happen in the country or the city? Does the story happen in one spot? Then down here you have, when does the story happen? And I thought these were actually really good questions um, down here because I never thought about, uh, let's see if I can get a better view. Hold on. Okay, uh, let's see, is it focusing? So how long a period, how long a period of time does the story cover? A few minutes, a single day, a whole lifetime? I never ever consider that type of question. We kind of just read through it. And some books happens in a few minutes or a single day or a whole lifetime. So that was good. Those were good questions and my kids really enjoyed listening uh, I mean answering those questions okay so I just want to show you guys a couple more things in the program out here here's what they look like and they have this is the Reading roadmaps, and this is a comprehensive list of books, uh, scope of sequence for K through 12. And it kind of shows you how you can break up the stories with a with different models. So you can do daily, weekly, monthly, six weeks, quarterly, seasonally, okay? And so if you wanted to get something like this to go along with this, you can do that as well if you don't have like a reading list. This is just a ton of reading options. And the reason why this is good and it's not like other reading lists is because let's say for instance you have you have the kindergarten level and then you have the title and then they give you the plot the conflict or one of the conflicts the theme right the devices that you can um, discuss and then they have alternate books so if you're someone like me who has no clue this is really helpful because when we go through these books, I have an idea of what I'm looking for. And so you have kindergarten, first grade, and this would be the weekly, the daily weekly model. I'll skip ahead. This is like the ninth grade daily weekly model. So you have your list of books. Okay. Then if you wanted to do, let's say 10th grade, and this will be the monthly model. So it kind of gives you a really good breakdown on how you can work through this. And then, let me see. I just want to go to the last. So then, this, then you have the 12th grade list of books that you can cover monthly. All right. And again, with each 
book, they kind of give you the plot, the theme, the literary devices and things like that. So I got that book. Now, we when I first started, I started with this book here. And what this book is, is sort of like a literary, a literature guide, okay? Because I really just needed all the help that I can get with understanding the method. And if you are just starting out with this and you're using the Socratic list of questions, you really should start with picture books. And so that's what we did. So here are the list of picture books. And I was able to get them all I believe from my library, maybe except for like one or two. And I'm gonna show you, we, we actually did all, we well, I, we, we did definitely did Brave Irene, we did Sam, Bang, and Moonshine. We didn't do all the places to love. We did Harriet, that was a good one. Harriet, You'll Drive Me Wild was fun. We did Apples in Oregon. And I don't remember doing Fishing in the Air. I don't think I could get that one. We did The Crown of God, that was really good. All right, and I'll just show you real quick. So what I did. So what I did with this one. So we started with Harriet, You'll Drive Me Wild. Okay. And it, every book starts off with a... Sorry. Ugh. I need to switch hands. Wait a minute. Okay, let me get the camera back. <laughs> Alright, sorry. So every um, book starts off with a quick card, so it just gives you a quick little reference here of what's going on. And then what Missy Andrews did is she selected the questions from the Socratic list. And as you can see, so it would say 1D. 1D matches up with matches up in here. Okay, so 1D. Okay? So every, all of the books do that. 1D. So what is the move? Oh, okay, sorry about that. I had to take my son to the party. All right, so here we have, so again, this is Harriet, You'll Drive Me Wild. And she went ahead and selected the questions, which was very helpful. And I just marked the questions that I wanted to discuss. So we did not talk about every like I didn't go over every question but we definitely did what kind among what kinds of people is the story set and she gives you the answer okay and because as you can see I don't the reason why I only selected these two was because she did a list of questions for every um, section so this was the setting then she gave me questions for about the characters, okay? And I selected those three. And I went ahead, and what you want to do is you want to go ahead, in any book that you choose, you want to go ahead, look at your Socratic list, and you want to mark down all the questions that you want to cover with your child. And that's, and that's what I did. So that was the setting, the characters, we talked about the conflict, we talked about... So we I did uh, these two, okay, and some more over here. And then we went ahead and we talked about the theme. Now, I did go through all of them just because I wanted to get a feel for it, okay? And so here's an example of the style. Does the author use the sounds of our language to create interest in her story? She rhymes, there's repetition, alliteration, and then a little something about the author. And there's also a chart already filled out. So I have all the answers. This is just because I've never done anything like this before. So this was a really good visual for me. Okay? So that was, um, this is kindergarten and beyond because you can, you can do this with any book. Then I went ahead and picked up 
this Ready Readers, and this one is for chapter books. So this is grades one through six, and I have not used this yet. Although we did read The Cricket in Times Square, we did not do the others. Okay? I plan on doing them, but we're taking it one step at a time. We're just getting used to having good discussions. And when you get familiar with these questions, these questions just happen naturally for me. So I know automatically uh, the questions that I want to talk about, about the setting and the, and the conflicts and the characters. Not every single Socratic question, but a few of them just to get my kids sort of rolling, get the ball rolling. All right, then I did get this just because I think I got a bundle. I'm not sure, but I got this. We haven't obviously we haven't used it yet. I don't have any grades. Uh, I don't have grade five yet. But this was the Chronicles of Narnia, and this actually covers the entire Narnia series. So I'll show you. See, okay, so all the books. All right, I should have just held it up like this. I'm sorry. I hope, I hope this was good. Um, it's a really good program. Like I said, again, there are so many questions in this. They really have exhausted. Um, you have questions about the weather, uh, character. Who's the antagonist, right? And how do they stop the protagonist from doing what the oh, no. protagonist needs to do? So, anyway, I hope this was helpful. If not, <laughs> you know, make a comment below. And then maybe I can um, concentrate on one area. I don't know. We'll see. Alright, guys. Well, thanks so much for watching. This is a review of Teaching the Classics. And this is not sponsored. I purchased all of this with my own money. I've been using it for the last several months. We love it. I find myself doing it with our read-alouds. Now it's getting loud in here. With our read-alouds, with movies. We're always just talking about uh, or using the list of questions here. So, alright. Thanks. Bye.